Who am I? Where am I going? What is my place in the universe? Is there a meaning to my existence? Does my life have a purpose? Afloat in the formless universe, and yet bound by the time and space of their existence, seekers and questers have asked these questions from the beginning of time. In this episode, God, Soul and the World, in our series, What is Hinduism? We draw on the profound Hindu tradition for answers to these eternal questions. Alone in the vast cosmos surrounding him, the astronaut floats in space. He is totally dependent on his spacesuit and life support equipment to keep him alive. Take all that away, and what will become of him? Take away our support systems of the sensory perceptions, our sense of self, and what will happen to us? Rishis and sages assure us that we too are like astronauts on a voyage through time and space. Our journey encompasses many bodies, many lives, much learning in the classroom of life experiences known as Maya. Our joy-filled quest is communion with divinity, where we shed all our props and supports in a radiant union with the universal energy. Through our life journeys, we ask the questions and seek the clues that will help us to realize the power, the presence and the truth of God. Divinity. What, what is, is the nature, nature of divinity? divinity? How, How can, can I, I find the sacred core of the universe? universe? How can I find God? How can I find God? This God, an old man with a beard sitting in heaven. Is he a young man in pain? Is she a beautiful woman riding a lion? Or a tree, an ocean, a mountain. Perhaps God is all of these, and you, and me, and the tree. <laughs> the nature of divinity, the relationship between humanity and divinity, the completeness of both the individual and the formless, endless universe which contains him or her, these are the essence of mystic Hindu thought. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachyate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vashishyate Om Shanti 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 Purna means full. This is full, that is full. From the full comes the full. If you take the full from the full, full itself remains. Om peace, peace, peace. One of the factors that makes Hinduism the world's greatest religion is that it allows its seeker to discover God in many different ways. There does not have to be just one book, one guru or one path to understanding divinity. But every Hindu is aware that all the different images and concepts of God 
lead to and are part of that one formless divine energy. That is why Hinduism recognizes all religions and spiritual quests as equally valid and significant. We have learned earlier that there are four major denominations of the Hindu faith. There is Shaivism, the worship of Shiva, Shaktism, the worship of Devi or Shakti, the female embodiment of divinity, Vaishnavism, the worship of Vishnu in his many forms, and Smritiism, which is the universalistic path. Shiva is the primary deity of Shaivites. Shiva is pure love and compassion, both immanent and transcendent, pleased with the devotee's purity and striving. The seeker performs penance and asceticism to understand the mystic truth of Shiva, which is revealed through his grace. In Shaktiism, the Divine Mother Shakti or Sri Devi is worshipped as Durga, Kali, Chamunda Devi, Vaishnu Devi or Raja Rajeshwari. She is both love and terror, gentle and wrathful. She is assuaged with submission and sacrifice. Bhakti and Tantra are the paths for Advaitic union with the feminine energy of Devi. For Vaishnavites, the primary temple deity is Lord Vishnu and his incarnations, particularly the avatars of Krishna and Rama. A loving and beautiful Lord, Vishnu lives in a state of divinely creative deep sleep and his incarnations take the form on earth to protect his followers. Om Shuklam Varadharam Vishnum Shashi Varnan Chatur Bhujam Prasanna Vadanan Dhyajet Sarva Vigno Chanting the thousand names of Vishnu is a means of communication for the follower who loves to revel in the God's loving presence. Avikaraja Shuddhaja Nityaja Paramatmane Sadaika Rupa Rupaja Vishnave Sarvajishnave Smritism, which is derived from the word smriti or memory, is the worship of one's personal deity, Ishta Devata. It is understood that all gods are part of the absolute being and can be worshipped in the form of one's choice. It is understood too that man and God are one, part of Brahman, the absolute even though the maya of existence may seem to divide man and God.
Being like a good person and then if you're a good person, yeah, but all you will want is to be on the safe way. side and No, you don't want No, bad. you just don't care. Like you don't no, care if there's a God. The search for God has always been a subject for debate and discussion among young people. God is divine and he made the world. So does that make the world divine? Yes. Can you not see God's divinity in every aspect of the world? For God created the world and all things in it. Everything is within him and he is within everything. The creator of all, God himself, is uncreated. He wills into manifestation all souls and forms, perpetually issuing them from himself, absorbing them into himself. The world is not a thing separate from God but a perfect emanation of himself. God creates, constantly sustains his creation and absorbs it back into himself. But do you think it would be advisable to abandon our worldly life in pursuit for a spiritual quest? Life is to be lived in this world in joy, performing one's karma and fulfilling one's dharma. In the world, we grow from ignorance to wisdom, from darkness to light, from mortality to transcendence. Think of the world as a playground that God has created for all of us, his children, so we can fully experience life. But remember, living in the world doesn't mean to get attached to worldly pursuits of power, possession and desire. Live in the world in a state of loving detachment, enjoying the beauty of every moment of your life. So what is liberation? Liberation, or moksha, is freedom from the cycle of reincarnation. While moksha is commonly accepted as occurring after death, there are rare beings who may achieve this state while living. These beings are known as jivan muktas or realized souls. The jivan mukta souls evolve in inherent perfection in the embodied state, while liberation or moksha marks an end to the earthly sojourn it may also be seen as a beginning, for moksha is not a state of extinction, rather it is a state of perfect freedom, proximity to or oneness with the divine. One of the beauties of Hinduism is that it is a multiple choice belief system. There are always more than one path for the quester to follow. So too, with the attainment of liberation, where each major school of thought has a subtly differing view. In Shaivite thinking, liberation is attained when realization permeates every atom of the body, every aspect of life, freedom from selfishness and attachment and total abidance in the divine presence distinguish the liberated being. The various yogas are complemented by deep devotional arts, thus making realization penetrate the external as well as the internal life of the seeker. A liberated soul may choose to be born as a benevolent Satguru, helping others along the path. Such a person is known as an Upadeshi. A Nirvani or ascetic, on the other hand, shuns all human involvement 
existing in silent contemplation at the very pinnacle of worldly consciousness. For the followers of Shakti, the feminine principle of divinity, the Divine Mother is the Mediatrix, bestowing Advaitic Moksha on those who worship her. Moksha is complete identification with the transcendental Divine, which is achieved when Kundalini Shakti or individuated Divine Energy is raised through the Sushumna current of the spine to the top of the head where it merges with Shiva, the Absolute. Shakti practices include visualization and ritual, tantra, mantras, yantras, magic, trans mediumship, and animal sacrifice. In Shaktiism, Jeevan Muktas are known as Kaulasiddhas, liberated beings who can move freely through time and space. For Vaishnavites, the path of bhakti or devotion leads to freedom from the worldly bonds of Maya and Karma. Liberation is achieved with the sweet surrender of mind, body and soul to Lord Vishnu in a divine union of eternal bliss. While this union is achieved only after death, great souls may take birth in the world from time to time for the benefit of humankind, returning to Vishnu as soon as the task is accomplished. Those who follow the path of Smriti or remember tradition, attain liberation with the realization of Advaita, where the Self and Brahman, the Absolute, are one. For the realized being, all illusion has vanished, even while he or she lives out their mortal life. And at death, both the outer and inner body are extinguished. Only Brahman remains. Scriptural study Meditation and reflection guide the followers of the Smriti tradition along the path of Jnana Yoga or knowledge, leading to their ultimate merger with the all-pervasive Brahman. Was that a little technical for you? In that case, we are blessed to have with us four great realized beings who will share with us their individual journeys of the soul. Our guests are mystics and poets, and they offer us in their own words their understanding of liberation. Putting forth the Shaivite view of liberation is the 12th century saint poetess of Kashmir, Laleshwari. The Shakti approach is explained by Ram Prasad Sen, the visionary poet of 18th century Bengal. The master of Nirgun poetry and Advaita philosophy, Kabir Das, speaks for the universalistic view of the followers of Smriti. Vaishnav theory is expounded by the 15th century royal poetess Mirabai of Rajasthan. I bow to the great Laleshwari, who predates us all. And even while I immerse myself in loving contemplation, of my Krishna Gopal. I thirst for the knowledge of the divine, that Ma Laldeed, that is how the Kashmiri people affectionately address you, is it not, Ma? Will shower on us like sweet honey from a nectar filled jasmine flower. What is the path that one should follow, O oh realized soul, to achieve that ecstatic union with the divinity? known as Mukti or Moksha, that I so yearn for. After the holy books disappear, 
then only the memory of the sacred chants and rituals will remain. Then they too will disappear. And then nothing but the mortal conscious mind is left. And then that mind too disappears, merging into nothingness. Well said. Nethi, nethi, nethi. Not this, the holy books. Not this, the mystical knowledge. Not this, mortal consciousness. And yet, my friend, not this, but also this. My Lord Shiva is both form and formless, both heaven and earth, the day and night. Shiva is all-pervading space, divinity, and the offering to divinity. Kabir Das, is this contrary to your view? Liberation for me is to reach that place, that state, where there is no wind, water, sun, moon, no earth, no sky, where there is no beginning, no end, no past, present or future, no gods, no Gauri, no Ganesh, no Vishnu, nor even dear Laleshwari, your Mahesh. To that place, that country of the mind, I say, let us go. Let's go, let's go, let's go. I went in search of that place of liberation and found it in the shrine of my own soul. There I beheld Shiva and Shakti merged into one in absolute ecstasy. I reached the nectar-filled moonlit lake at the center of the mystic universe which was the center of my own soul. At that instant, apparently dead, I was finally alive. Truly, your words move me to tears of joy, inspired Laldev and wise Kabir. And joy, limitless and infinite, is the liberation that awaits those who merge with radiant Vishnu. For life waxes and wanes imperceptibly, and all too soon do you reach the fearsome ocean crossing of life, death and rebirth. But with my dear Lord Giridhar Gopal guiding my heart, I know I will reach the shore safely and receive his blessing in the ocean of his love. My dear child, blessed with love. Brother Ram Prasad, singer of glorious songs to the Divine Mother, what happens after death? Gaze intently into the burning heart of joy, my friends and you shall perceive the incandescent Kali as she burns down barriers and irradiates the worlds and the minds with light. Then love merges with reality, creating a state of non-duality, Advaita. Death becomes meaningless when the flickering lamp of life merges with the divine fire of Kali. And then you end, friends, like you began, an infant at the comforting bosom of Mother Kali. We leave our poets immersed in their discussion that transcends time and space and return to our present.
as we follow the paths of knowledge, action, love and devotion, learning many lessons from many different lives, we seek release from mortality, finally to be liberated from the cycle of birth and death. And with liberation comes the understanding that moksha and mukti are not freedom from the yokes and bonds of karma, but freedom to be one with the absolute energy that permeates the universe. The Mundaka Upanishad says, the self cannot be attained by the weak, nor by the careless, nor through aimless disciplines. But if one who knows strives by the right means, his soul enters the abode of God. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti.